All right, I know some of you are super excited about this. You've been waiting. It's the $200 used camera that I bought online. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna make the most out of it to make some dramatic food photography. What's shaking bacon? I'm Joni Simon, welcome to my studio. This is where I do food photography, and the goal here is to improve your food photography skills so you can feel confident behind the camera. And specifically, we're talking about this camera right here. I bought this little baby on bnhphotovideo.com. I've got it linked down below. They've got a used equipment department, which I've actually now at this point bought three different cameras from. I bought my Sony a6000 there, I bought this little guy there, I bought a Nikon D750 there, and they've all come in great condition. This is not like sponsored by B&H or anything. It's just, it's my go-to retailer anytime I want a low cost camera solution. And so I know there's so many of you out there who have, you know, entry level cameras and you're like, oh, I just, I feel like I need a better camera to take better photos. And I'm here to dispel that myth. We're going to take some fantastic photos for the next couple weeks with this little guy here. This is the Rebel T2i Canon, uh, $200. Got me the body and the lens. So of course I had the memory card as well. But then the only other other things that we're going to use today we're going to be shooting with natural light which I know something new and different again <laughs> for this channel I'm obsessed with artificial light it's mostly what I shoot uh, but we're gonna return to the natural light because it's free this is all about making the photography super cost-effective and then additional equipment that I'm using in today's video I've got a five-in-one reflector I'm using the big one today they also have a smaller version too which I also have one of those too they're easier to fold up but uh, you know bigger's better right and then I've got some black foam core because I mentioned this is gonna be a dramatic food photo and for sure, if you're gonna go dramatic, you're gonna go moody, black foam core, gonna be a super helpful tool for that. Now you'll also see that I've mounted the camera to my C-stand for that overhead position. That is not necessary, you don't have to. This could absolutely be done handheld. I just put it up on the C-stand so that I have consistency throughout the images so that I can show you step-by-step step how I built the lighting. And two, I'm just kinda lazy. I just <laughs> figured it's easier, let's just mount it up there. I did get up on a chair though to see it. I didn't shoot tethered. Again, we're really stepping outside of our comfort zone this month, right? But I say all that not as a joke, but more so to be completely honest and serious that you can make amazing food photos for less than $300 all in for all this gear. That's what we're working with today. And then as far as the background that I'm shooting on today, it's just that favorite old table of mine. I've made a video about it. You can also check that video out. And then as far as subject matter today, we are shooting some kale, but not just any kale. This kale actually came directly from our garden, from our backyard. I'm so proud of it that we kept it alive and that it's completely edible and also very photographable. And we've got two different varieties of kale here that you can see. So it kind of adds to just a little bit of visual interest and variety and that the way that the different kale kale leaves are folding. So now as far as the setup, you can see that I have the table pushed up against this Arcadia door, this big, huge window. And that window is south facing. It doesn't have direct line of sight at this point in the day. It's like the late afternoon. It doesn't have the direct line of sight of the sun, but it's Arizona and the sun is just always intense. And so in this situation, I've added that five in one reflector to diffuse the light, just to cover up that window uh, and to break up those rays of light and to soften it up a bit. But you can and also see I've got this dark curtain which I've kind of pulled up along that lower left side of what you'll see in just a moment that lower left side of the frame which is just kind of helping to limit the spread of light to really help direct it directly onto the subject because this is where we can really make things look interesting right that play of shadow and light by restricting and adding light in different places and so manipulating it by opening and closing that curtain and moving it in relationship to the subject and then you can also see that I've got two pieces of black foam core there. I've got one that's kind of a little small strip. You'll see what that does here in just a minute. And then I have another taller one then up at the top of the frame, ultimately creating a nice little vignette for us. And so for the very first test shot, just to kind of see what we're working with, I literally just put the kale down on the table, which when I'm working with produce or things that I'm gonna let it kind of have that messy sort of feel is I'll just literally put it down and see what it does and then kind of tweak it and move it and dial it in from there. Now, this is definitely one of the advantages if you're just getting started in food photography is to play with produce and play with other things that really aren't gonna change, that they're gonna be great for a long period of time and you can manipulate it and move them and they can sit around and they're really gonna look very similar you know over the course of your shoot as opposed to of course shooting like a dish of ice cream which 
you don't have a whole lot of time to deal with that. And so you can see from this first shot, this is just the kale on the table. I didn't have any black cards at this point. I didn't have that curtain drawn up. All I had was a that five in one reflector was in the window to diffuse the light, but that was pretty much it. And so kind of looking at this image, we can see that it's pretty bright there on the light left side, and then it's not really reaching over to the right side. So it's like, okay, well, where's the opportunity? And so what you can see in the next shot, and this is where I'm starting to build the lighting, right? Build in some shadows, make things a little bit more interesting is by pulling the curtain up, right? So that we get that darkening there on the lower part of the frame. And then I also added that taller piece of foam core. And so this is in essence creating sort of that beam of light coming in through the center, which is really helping to illuminate those central leaves, but it still didn't really feel balanced to me. It wasn't what I was going for. And so then I was like, okay, well, let's go ahead and play with the leaves a little bit, right? Maybe if we rotate these, move these around because sort of the broad side of some of those leaves in the previous image, you can see are really catching the light. So kind of turning them away from the light a little bit, but then also observing that we've got kind of an S curve going on, really looking for a composition within the leaves. This is where you really put on your observer hat and just start looking at what are the lines, what's the movement that's going on in these leaves. And so I was kind of seeing this like movement of this S curve pattern between that top leaf and the lower leaf, the ones that are kind of that brighter green as opposed to the darker greens that are in the center. So I continued to move those around to kind of reposition leaves and I really started to get closer to a composition that I was liking, but then the light just still really felt kind of uneven to me that everything was just a little too bright on that left side and then I needed to like dampen that down a little bit and also kill some of the glare that was popping up off of the table. So this is where then I got that thinner strip of black foam core and place that then along the bottom edge. And so you can see that that is now blocked that glare on that left hand side and also help to even things out so that we've got an even amount of brightness across the scene. Now, one quick note, because I'm looking at the camera settings and I'm realizing I told you something incorrect. I said you could shoot this without a tripod, which you could, but you wouldn't want to shoot the same camera settings as I'm using for this particular image. Now, obviously camera settings are going to differ depending on your light source, your environment, like so many different factors. But in this particular situation, I'm shooting with a pretty slow shutter speed of one tenth of a second in order to be able to keep the ISO low. And then I'm also shooting at the widest aperture for this particular lens at 4.5 and so given those restraints I'm shooting with a really slow shutter speed and so I wouldn't want to shoot this handheld because at one tenth of a second I'd end up with some blurriness going on right some camera shake and so my option if I was shooting handheld is I'd probably dip into a higher ISO or you shoot it on a tripod and make sure you don't have any shake going on and you can use those slower shutter speeds. And so once I'd really played around with the position of those black cards and the curtain and I got everything where I wanted it, it's kind of cinching everything in, I like the position of the leaves, then I got that final shot. But what you'll notice too is that I went pretty wide with it and I ended up cropping in because the thing that I really liked and I observed in this image is sort of this symmetrical effect. And that symmetry is really elevated by cropping in, right? That we get this effect of kind of these two triangular formations pointing into one another, that wouldn't have been as readily visible if we hadn't cropped in to really help zero the eye into those shapes going on. But now looking at the final image and looking at the raw, like straight out of camera, you can see there's quite a bit that happened in the editing, the post process. And so what I'm gonna do is next week, we're gonna be back and I'm gonna walk you through the edit of this photo. And so in preparation for that, if you wanna do that along with me, is you can actually download the preset, I created a preset, set based on all these edits as well as the raw file and so I've got that all ready for you if you want to follow the link down in the description box below and go ahead and download those you can play with them check out the settings and then next week I will walk you through the creative process the decision making that went into editing this photo so that we got a higher impact image out of our $200 camera but hopefully what you saw today is that the camera is not as important as it is to really understand and diagnose and manipulate your light. And then next week, the importance of a great edit. And so with that, I hope you stay safe, you stay out of trouble, and I'll see you next week, okay? Bye.